has made Disney tick throughout the decades. The story of the Walt Disney Company is connected to a classic fairy tale about an innocent girl and her seven loyal friends. I'm speaking, of course, of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Some say that Walt Disney had the story of Snow White in mind even at the beginning of the Disney Studio. In 1923, he partnered with his older brother Roy to produce the Alice Comedies. The Alice Comedies were about a young girl lost in a fairy tale landscape, facing danger and meeting strange and comical creatures. Sound familiar? They were a hit, and the studio continued to produce short cartoons. A big breakthrough for the art form of animation happened when Walt Disney gave the world the first cartoon in synchronized sound, starring a little fella named Mickey. It's hard to believe, but just a decade later, Walt Disney astounded the world with the first ever feature-length cartoon, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. A story told so well that it's won the hearts of audiences decade after decade. Here's a trailer early audiences saw where Walt Disney himself personally introduces those lovable dwarfs. Successful Silly Symphony animated shorts. 
In addition to the mechanics of technical innovation, Walt insisted that his artists keep challenging their own talents. In 1932, Walt even formed an after-hours art school at the Disney studio to train his animators. In any action drawing, there is a fifth key. It is a line of action. Trust me. In this rough drawing of Mickey, that line is the basis of the action and was drawn first. The result was a new kind of personality animation and a level of acting that elevated the cartoon to equal status with live action films. A good example is the Academy Award and spawned a hit song as well. This musical success confirmed Walt's instinct that good music was as vital to his storytelling as good art. All of the pioneering work in animation at Disney was leading up to something, and in 1937, the whole world would know what it was.
and Grumpy, who thinks he's a confirmed woman hater. And there is Happy with his beaming smile. And last but not least, wonderful, silly Dopey. You'll never forget them or stop. Hello, folks. I'm Fess Parker. The theatrical re-release of Snow White in 1944 had reversed the declining fortunes of the Disney studio and established a tradition of reissues of all the Disney animated features. Disney had survived the war years, and Walt continued to move forward in his expansion of the definition of Disney. 1950 saw the release of Treasure Island, Disney's first completely live-action feature. You got the word of Long John Silver. That year also marked Disney's debut in the new medium of television with One Hour in Wonderland, the studio's first television special. Television! Whoa! Steady, old boy. Take it easy. Television! Ha! I have never been so insulted in all my unborn days. When Snow White returned to movie screens in 1952, she again proved to be the fairest of them all. Cinderella, Peter Pan, and Lady and the Tramp continued the Disney tradition of animated storytelling. Disney also introduced audiences to the nature film with the True Life Adventure series, an idea so revolutionary that Disney had to set up its own company to distribute the film. The success of his first TV special encouraged Walt to make a big commitment to the new medium. The next few years saw the TV debut of the Mickey Mouse Club. Hey there, hi there, ho oh there, you're as welcome as can be. And the first airing of an anthology program called Disneyland. This wasn't just a TV program, it was a showcase, specially designed to highlight the great Disney entertainment product and to acquaint the public with an exciting new project that Walt was cooking up. I felt that there should be something built, some kind of a, an amusement enterprise built where that the parents and the children could uh, have fun together. A destination theme park, also called Disneyland, which had its grand opening in the summer of 1955. One of the great hits spawned by the Disneyland TV show was the tale of a stalwart fella named Davy Crockett. And adventures caused a national sensation. Out of the night when the full moon is bright comes a horse that's known as Zorro. A few years later, the debut of Zorro caused a similar, if somewhat smaller, commotion. Walt hadn't turned his back on the movies, though. 1954 saw the debut of the spectacular 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Walt's first and only science fiction feature film. As the decade wound down, production was underway on another ambitious animated feature, Sleeping Beauty, as well as The Shaggy Dog. Shake on it? Certainly I'll shake on it, will be. The first in a series of a new kind of comedy that would become a staple of the studio for the next two decades. As Walt ended the decade with a slate of new projects in media both familiar and innovative, a special old friend came back for another visit.
and the Seven Dwarfs. A glow with the warmth of characters all the world knows and loves. Beautiful Snow White. You'll just have time to wash. Wash? Fearless Doc. Our house! The lip fight! The life slip! Blushing Bashful. Explosive Sneezy. <laughs> Carefree Happy. Happy, ma'am. That's me. Grumbling Grumpy. <laughs> Women. Ever Snoozing Sleepy. Hard again. <laughs> Lovable Dopey. And there's Prince Charming. The Heartless Queen. <laughs> and the Wicked Witch. Have a bite. Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs is filled with the sounds of happiness and the songs all the world loves to sing. I'm with you.
once again for your entire family. The lyrical, light-hearted entertainment of Walt Disney, Snow White, and the Seven Dwarfs. Magic milk on the Beguiling Disney characters loved by everyone. And of course, this is Grumpy. Much. Here's Doc. <laughs> why, why, yes? Yeah. And Bashful. Oh. Sleepy. Hard to get. <laughs> and this must be. <laughs> Sneezy. Happy? That's me. And this is Dopey. He don't talk none. <laughs> you mean he can't? He don't know. He never tried. <laughs> then, too, there's the terrible witch. How about that? Boy, this delightful experience in happiness. See Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Hello everyone, I'm Dean Jones. Just like the 60s, here at Disney, the 1970s started off with a huge hit. The live-action comedy The Love Bug had roared into theaters and across the finish line to become the nation's number one movie. Nice going, Herbie. In the summer of 1970, the studio established the Walt Disney Archives to collect and preserve the historical materials relating to Walt Disney and the company he founded. Down at Disneyland, the 100 million guests walked through the gates. And in Florida, Walt Disney World opened with a huge celebration. The Florida project was seen through to its completion and dedicated by Walt's brother and business partner, Roy, who passed away just a few months after. 1973 saw the celebration of the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney Productions. In movie theaters, Disney was the king of comedy, with several hit films featuring college student Dexter Riley, and favorites like the Apple Dumpling Gang. How much money you figure that dude's got in front of him? About 500. 500? You know, that'd be, uh, much 200 apiece. Escape to Witch Mountain. You two got powers beyond belief. We're not doing this. This is something too powerful for us to do. And candle shoes. Get up out of bed in the morning with the dukes up, you know? Got him up. First punch is yours. I see. There were the big screen musical fantasies, bed knobs and broomsticks. Oh, uh, uh, oh, oh. Elliot. 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 My dragon. And the animation department delivered the Aristocats. Everybody wants to be a cat. Robin Hood. I owe my life to you, my darling. I couldn't have lived without you, Robin. And the rescuers. And in the middle of all this, 1975 saw the return of an old girl who continued to prove that no matter her age, she was still the fairest in the land. Hi, everyone. I'm Jody Benson. The 1980s will long be remembered as an era of optimistic growth and aggressive investment. And the Disney studio was certainly in rhythm with the times. The decade began with booming business in the Disney parks. Disneyland celebrated its 25th anniversary in 1980. At Walt Disney World in 1982, an ambitious new kind of discovery park, Epcot, opened its gates. And in April of 1983, Disney's first international park, Tokyo Disneyland, opened. Back in Burbank, 1981 saw the establishment of Walt Disney Home Video. The Disney Channel began broadcasting in 1983. And the same year saw another triumphant return of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. What's your name? It's hard to say in English. In your language. Alright. My name is. Nineteen eighty four saw the release of Splash, the first movie under the studio's new touchstone banner, and Donald Duck celebrated his fiftieth birthday. In the fall of nineteen eighty four, Michael Eisner and Frank Wells were named chairman and president of Walt Disney Productions. This dynamic duo brought with them a fresh perspective on the Disney legacy and an aggressive plan for stimulating Disney's growth. <laughs> whoa, whoa. What is now going on in the studio? Uh -huh. Yes, who? Uh, Donald Duck. No. Uh, Goofy. Uh -uh. And you're Roger Rabbit. <laughs> oh, sure. Come on, get real. Okay, I give up. <laughs> who, Jeff? <laughs> Vigorous production at the studios led to hit after hit, both on television and in feature films. 
which also led to a string of sensational hits. What I want from you is your voice. My voice? You got it, sweet cakes. No more talking, singing, zip. Other areas of the company were growing too. In order to better reflect the company's increasing diversity, in 1986, the name Walt Disney Productions was changed to the Walt Disney Company. Part of the growth in diversity was reflected in the opening of the first Disney store in Glendale, California. Within the following decade, there would be more than 600 stores worldwide. Michael and Frank also spearheaded an unprecedented expansion of Walt Disney World Resort. The 1980s saw the opening of Disney MGM Studios, Pleasure Island, and dozens of hotel and resort amenities throughout the Florida property. And in the midst of this amazing expansion and unprecedented growth, the studio even found time to celebrate the golden anniversary of one of its most important stars. Summer to theaters everywhere. Hey, look! The motion picture event of the year. What is it? Why, it, it, it's a girl! The 50th anniversary of Walt Disney's timeless classic, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Come celebrate with the fairest of them all, the merriest of them all, and the scariest of them all. It's the golden anniversary of Snow White, Sleepy, Doc, Bashful, happy, grumpy, dopey, and sneezy. We got a saver! Whether it's your first time or your 50th, now is the time to experience the magic Much. of the most beloved animated motion picture of all time. A true story. Later, the 
stage production of The Lion King opened there, taking Broadway by storm. The show went on to win the Tony Award for Best Musical. Disney's commitment to sports continued with the 1997 opening of Disney's Wide World of Sports Baseball Stadium at Walt Disney World Resort and the 1999 purchase of the Anaheim Angels baseball team. In the summer of 1998, the Disney Magic cruise ship departed on its maiden voyage. In August of the following year, she was joined by the sister ship, the Disney Wonder. In 1998, the fourth theme park on Walt Disney World property opened to great acclaim, Disney's Animal Kingdom. The succession of animated features that had begun with Snow White continued with the releases of Pocahontas, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Hercules, Mulan, and Tarzan. And although that connection was nearly six decades ago, the 1995 smash release of Disney and Pixar's Toy Story caused one critic to remark, it creates the kind of enchantment that must have surrounded Snow White. That smash success was followed by another Disney-Pixar collaboration, A Bug's Life, as well as the blockbuster sequel, Toy Story 2. The decade closed with the amazing world premiere concert tour of Fantasia 2000, a continuation of the 1940 classic Fantasia, a film that, like the Disney studio itself, never would have existed without that first success of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Pixar's 
his first 3D viewing experience up. A vast arg, aye, aye, me mateys, yo ho and such. Yeah, that's right. It was the decade of pirates with a little series of movies called Pirates of the Caribbean. In November of 2007, theaters got enchanted. Here was a movie that borrowed from the fairy tale traditions established by Snow White to tell a very modern story. Enchanted had three Oscar nominations for Best Song, just one of the many musical hits for Disney this decade. You've got your Hilary Duff, Camp Rock, some Hannah Montana, some Jonas Brothers, your high school musical, your high school musical two, and high school musical three senior year. Now, I've been known to bust some wildcat moves myself from time to time. <clears throat> the Muppets, who became part of the Disney family in 2004, even won a Grammy with their album, The Muppets, A Green and Red Christmas, in 2008. Oh, also in 2008, the Lion King Broadway musical celebrated its 10th anniversary. Uh, other productions like uh, Mary Poppins, The Little Mermaid, and the high school musical tour are building on its success in bringing Disney magic to live theater. As the decade came to an end, a new restoration of Snow White was completed on Disney Blu-ray, and the new generation got the chance to enjoy the magic of this Disney classic. Just like Snow White, the Walt Disney Company has had many dreams come true, and the dreams continue. As Walt said, Disneyland will continue to grow as long as there is imagination left in the world. And as long as there is imagination, the Walt Disney Company will continue the great tradition of family entertainment that Snow White and the Seven Dwarves renews decade after decade. Before evil sorcerers cast their spells, before perilous rulers would be kings, before wicked witches ruled the sea,